Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance, originally released in 2001, it has recently in the past three weeks or months, so somewhere in there, uh, been re-released on PS4, Xbox, Nintendo Switch. Um, there might be a PC release, but um, I'm not. I'm unsure about that. As of the recording of this video, I don't know anything about uh, there being a PC release. There's been some talks of, about it, but it's not out yet anyway. And I actually didn't play this game for a few years after it came out. Um, I remember 2001, I was, I think, in sixth grade <laughs> and uh, didn't even know the game existed when it came out. Didn't know for a couple years after, until a couple years after it came out. And um, I liked the game okay, but didn't really pay much attention to it until I discovered a cheat for it, which I actually did a video on that. Um, and then I really got into it. Um, but I, like I said in the uh, video that I made for this uh, cheat, I also like to play games legit or try my best to play all through all the way through legit and then use cheats to like kind of more enjoy the story and get a sense of that and just play through and wreck everything because that's fun to do too. <laughs> Um, but we're actually going to do a review for this. So Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance, the re-release, um, as you can see, everything pretty much is average, um, but it's just because they're really compared to the original, there isn't a significant improvement in this game, um, not as much as I would have expected for a re-release. The one really positive thing that I can say is they did put the cheats in the re-release, which is really cool. I like that because it's like, like I said, I like to play through a game legit and then play with cheats. And because there's not a, a, a significant of enough graphical or gameplay uh, improvement in this game, I feel like I'm just playing the game over again. I don't feel like I'm playing a brand new game. And so having the cheat ability and being able to run through like that and kind of just re-experience the story, uh, mainly to see if I've, you know, maybe when I was younger, I didn't catch certain things. You know, when you're younger, you just, it was like, uh, I'd watch a certain movie or listen to certain music and they would say some things and because I was young and had the a, a attention span of a squirrel, I didn't really pay attention to or look into what certain things meant. And then when I got older, my curiosity as to what I was actually listening to in detail was there and I wanted to look into stuff or I automatically just I had a much better understanding of what the song was portraying or what the movie was saying about a certain time in the in the movie. And it's the same same way with games. I sometimes like to go back and re-experience the story mainly because the older games look like crap compared to games nowadays, let's face it. But they're still really, really fun to play because of the story and because of certain gameplay aspects. Um I I I thoroughly believe in my opinion the best stories were written in the ps1 days and the graphics are a hundred times better than they were but the stories the stories were epic and i loved the stories and so going back like in legend of dragoon there was a lot that i realized that i missed from that game story-wise and i would catch little certain details where it was like it had a very big impact on how I felt about the game and I actually left the game liking it more because I caught more of the story and it's the same way with uh, any older game that I play I go through it and want to witness the story over the gameplay because the gameplay like it says on this it's going to feel average it's not going to be anything significant because you're going back to an older game there has been an improvement in literally every 
aspect of a game besides the storyline. That's literally the only negative that I can take away from modern games is the storyline isn't quite as good and everything else you know the feel the look you know even even like going back to like first person shooters on xbox 360 there was this kind of icy uh slide feel to your character's movement like you were walking on ice and your character would would slide on ice no matter what ground you were on that's been improved in modern games and we we could make a whole other video about them releasing a game in an unfinished state that'll be for another video <laughs> i'm not going to talk about that right now in this i'm just from what i get from the games nowadays compared to the older games the story is still of an epic quality uh that isn't quite as significant nowadays and doesn't have that feel that same feel nowadays i mean i could still i could go back and play legend of dragoon again right now for like the 12th time and get just as much entertainment as the first 11 times whereas i could play something that just came out play it once and don't feel the need to play it again because yeah the graphics are great it's fun to look at but i've already seen it the gunplay the gameplay in general what's going on with the w w with the game itself it's fun it's interesting i but i've i've already seen it whereas the storyline is more like an imagination combined with your personal experience, something that's happened to you, and that story has an impact on you personally. And that's what grabs you and says, yeah, I want to go back and play that game. And it's, it's something that actually it exists out of the addictive nature of, I'm just addicted to the gameplay of this game. It's something that exists out of that. You know, like most modern games, it's like I'm addicted to the gameplay. I want to go back and play this game some more. Whereas this game, it's it's not an addictive nature. It's the story was so good. You want to go back and experience the story again. It had some kind of personal impact on you. It brought out emotion. And... That's the big difference between older games and modern games. The the modern games they don't they have that addictive nature, whereas a story it it just has an influence on you that makes you want to go and witness that story again. So that's the separation. And this game doesn't quite have that same type of story type of feel, but it's still was fun for me to go back and realize that like legend of dragoon there was a lot that i didn't really get that i got this time around so it was nice and it was fun to go back and play through it again um but it's not going to blow anybody away especially new players they're going to come into this and they'll probably play through it once maybe twice if they want to use the cheat to kind of like run through it again real quick and just have fun massacring everything but uh overall it's it, you're just gonna have an average time um the customization is average too it's just because there's not a significant amount of experimentation with the armors and the weapons and stuff like that that's kind of it's just a thing where it's like you literally um with modern games you have critical hit chance critical damage all these different uh types of types of things that are added onto a weapon you find a gun in it and it has 
you know, 56 damage, but it also can cause bleeding and and it has uh, an advantage to um, stunning an enemy. But then you find the exact same weapon with the exact same damage, but this one has an increase to critical chance. And so you're like looking at these two weapons that are exactly the same. They just have different abilities and you're like, which one is for me? Which one do I want to use? That doesn't really exist in this game it's i mean it does but it's it's it doesn't come off that way you don't decide between the two because the damage is just okay i have more damage this one this weapon is more powerful this weapon does more damage i'm obviously going to go towards this weapon and then you find another weapon that does even more damage it's the same way with the armor you have an armor that gives you this much and you find another piece of armor, it gives you more, you're just going to equip it because you want to be more powerful and you want to be able to live longer and take less damage. It's, you know, that was the thing with the older games. It was more simple. You just found the next thing and you equipped it because it was literally more powerful. And um, so it, it's just going to have this average feel, but it's pretty much just, you know, because of your experiences with modern games where it's like you find a weapon it may not necessarily be better it might be worse depending on your play style or how you want to play it whereas this is straightforward there's one play style you go through you kill you go to the next level you find more powerful weapons or more powerful gear go to the next level you know rinse and repeat so overall it just comes off as average the gameplay average um like you're gonna go through it you're gonna attack eventually you'll unlock more abilities unless you use the cheat and you know you'll it, it's just a progression where it's it's just like okay i got this this should be more powerful than what i had before and that that's pretty much all it is so it's like you're kind of like more willing to concentrate on the story i guess you could say um not to say that that's not fun because it is but it just doesn't have the same feel as modern games and stuff um it's way more detailed with modern games uh so when you go from that into this it's going to have an average feel it's not going to have a bad feel but it's not going to have like a holy crap this game is awesome feel um the weapons in the inventory, that's the only one that I put as high because of the randomness. There's still like a, a kind of randomness. Like when I did kind of like a walkthrough as to why I preferred to use the cheat, I went to this area where there was a golem and I would kill the golem. But... Before I fought the golem, I went to these chests and these two chests and this weapon stand that was there. And the weapon stand, for example, I went to it maybe between the PS2 version and the current. I went to it maybe like seven or eight times. And it was always different. Like one time it dropped a bow. One time it dropped a sword. One time it dropped a knife. One time, one time it it dropped a spear. Like I, I got something different from that weapon rack every time. So even if you get what you think is like the most powerful weapon in the game, there is a slight chance that a random drop might be better than that. So there is a, there is an excitement factor to that. Cause it's like, you never know exactly what you're going to get or what you're going to find. Um, and so what I said earlier about um, it being average, it's it's average compared to like what you would get if you went and bought it from a, a vendor in the game or something like that. Like the, the excitement is you have really powerful gear. You might find more powerful gear in a chest somewhere. It, it, but it's random so you might find something that's not that great but you could just anything that you don't like you could just sell so it's 
it's high, but I wouldn't say it's like very high because it's just like it's completely random. Like you could go in there, find a spear the next time, find a sword. You just never really know what you're going to get. And so that does leave some level of excitement there. Uh, the voice acting, um, from my recollection, I kind of wish I still had this for PS2 so I could have played the PS2 version and compared the, the, the voice acting and the overall voice of the game uh, compared to the game now. But I don't. So instead, I was comparing it to yet again modern games as compared to this game. Um, the voice acting is definitely average, and it's a little bit weird. It kind of has this clunky type feel to it, which most games have. Uh, if they're from an older time period, so it's not bad, but it's not like. You know, your expectation of this game shouldn't be like, I'm going to play this game for the voice acting. Um, and the music is also, it's, I, I'm going to say it's average. I, I was going to say high, but when I listened to it after a while, it was like, I've kind of, I haven't experienced that specific music, obviously, but most other games especially like the mmos that i've played and stuff they have a much more um enthusiastic tone to their songs and some songs it's kind of like all right be prepared we're about to fight an enemy you know get ready to go some songs will get you pumped up and ready this this was just kind of like it's just it's just there and it wasn't bad some of them were actually pretty good which is why i was like leaning towards high but then i decided average because overall it was just like i kept i kept realizing that i wasn't noticing the music after a minute whereas it's like especially in modern games when something's about to attack you or something is attacking you that music changes or it shifts in some kind of way and you're like oh you know it kind of oh yeah you know we're in a we're in a fight whereas before we were just walking down this alley or whatever and now we're in a fight and so yeah overall the game it didn't really make a whole lot of sense as to why they would re-release it so close to the dark alliance game that will be coming out the 22nd of June, I think, is what it was. I'm not sure. But I'm still happy they did because it was nice. Overall, it gave me that nostalgic feel that I do get from, like, Final Fantasy VIII and, uh, and Legend of Dragoon and, you know, the set going back and playing Sega Genesis and remembering, you know, playing those games with, with my brother when we were kids and, you know, sitting at the... Uh, dinner table just talking about how are we going to get to the next level and stuff like that it took me back to those years and and took me back to that time and stuff like that it was very nice to have that nostalgia and i'm glad that they re-released it i don't understand why they did it so close to the next dark dark alliance is supposed to be coming out but i'm still glad they did but uh yeah overall my expectation if you're going to go in and get this game and play this game just have an average expectation. Don't go into this expecting that the graphically it's going to be way better because it looks almost exactly the same to me. Um, I went back and looked at the older videos that I could find of the, you know, the original Xbox and PS2 versions. Um, I do, however, really like that they released it on Xbox, PS4, and Nintendo Switch. I think I don't have a Nintendo Switch. I don't know that much about the Nintendo Switch. But I would, ma I would imagine that this type of game would be a lot of fun to play on a handheld and be able to like, like this would be the game, one of the games where it was like, yeah, we're going to go to this dinner over at, you know, this person's house and 
you know, there's going to be a, a period of time in which I'm just sitting on the couch because they're watching football and I'm not personally into football. I can pick up the Nintendo Switch and play that game and I would get, you know, enjoyment out of it and be able to just pretty much pick up it whenever. I mean, yeah, you have to go to a book and save, but they're they're pretty they're pretty close together. Like, it doesn't take very long to get to the next save and stuff like that. So this would be, like, one of those games where it'd be like, yeah, this would this would be something that I would play on the go and would get a decent enough enjoyment out of it. So if I was going to say pick it up for Xbox, PS4, and Nintendo Switch, I would probably say the Nintendo Switch over anything else. Because um, I, I would imagine this would feel feel the best on a handheld um, in my personal opinion. But with that being said, um, that's the end of the review. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, and I'll see you guys on the next one. All right. Later.